mental. Greetings and welcome to Brighton Seafront. Come and join me as I drive home. I've had a long day, I'm hot, I'm sweaty, I want to go home. So what better way for my journey back to my house to chat to you guys. Come and join me. Um, what are we going to talk about today? A couple of different topics. Depends how long the video is, whether I timestamp them down below. We'll talk a little bit about Farage, in the news, I think, with his stupid bank accounts. Uh, privatisation, Thames Water, we can have a little chat about that. NHS, 75 years old. A lot of people in the old GBBs and talk radio sector don't seem to want to celebrate it. It's a cult, it's a cult. It's bloody brilliant, that's what it is. And it's the only, only thing that we have that resembles some kind of socialism in, in our country. The only thing we can cling to, which brings us to uh, to uh, Thames Water. Uh, but first of all, I'll just quickly talk about YouTube, my monetization problems and stuff like that. In my last video, I kind of threw my toys out of the pram a little bit. <laughs> I'm not going to make any videos till September, so I'm upset with YouTube. I don't want to make any money for my videos. And at the time of that video, they were still showing adverts on, on my videos, uh, but they're not now. The, the, the demonetization is in full effect, uh, so there are no adverts, so they're not making any money out of my videos. So I, I, I feel less guilty, about, I, I'm, I'm happy about making videos, as long as they're not making money from it, because they pissed me off. They still robbed a lot of money from it. I'm not gonna get my ad revenue this month. Uh, it's like backdated two months, so they've stolen like two months worth of ad revenue from me uh, for the last couple of months. Or is there an argument? <laughs> oh god just just it's 30 seconds of your life mate just you know what i mean just move on uh just move on mate it's it's 30 seconds of your life i'll have to re-look back at that video to see what that bus driver done then uh but no road rage is worth getting that angry about and uh, just like just move on you know 30 seconds of your life just move on get on with life anyway what the fuck was i talking about youtube monetization yeah they're not making any money from my videos so i'm happy to put out videos but they still robbed two months worth of money from me and i'm pissed off and i'm more pissed off that i have to wait two months to reapply but you know i went against the rules what are you gonna do I'll hold my hands up. I was in the wrong. But yeah, anyway, moving on from YouTube. Uh, Farage. <laughs> we talk about Farage. <laughs> I don't really want to talk about Farage, but then I, I do at the same time. Popular podcast at the moment, Alistair Campbell and Roy Stewart. I know it's very divisive, Alistair Campbell. <laughs> Just every time I hear him, I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. And then I'm like, Iraq war, Iraq war, Iraq war. It's, it's such a weird thing listening to the guy because he, he talks a lot of sense and I'm like, Iraq war, Iraq war, Iraq war. But anyway, on their podcast, they had John Major and they were talking about Boris Johnson. And John Major wants to take the route of not talking about the guy, not even mentioning his name. Just let him pale into non-existence and disappear into the background like he should because he wants to be talked about. And I kind of feel the same about Farage, really. It would be nice if he just didn't talk about him. But maybe that's why he's come out with this this banking bollocks to just just to be relevant and in the news again uh, because most of the time he's just midweek GB news that no one's really watching is it but but yeah it's, it's it's the thing I find most bizarre about this Nigel Farage banking thing is the amount of people that just blindly believe him now I understand his cult followers that blindly believe him I get that they're indoctrinated they've had the, the indoctrination for like 10 years I get it, but it's when you get people on the left defending him and pro-European people coming out. You know, someone that I know, I'm, I'm not going to name names, but very, very pro-European uh, comes out and saying, oh, I don't really agree with his politics, but it's, it's absolutely outrageous. You can't take away someone's bank account because of their political views. So you're just blindly believing that this is the reason why Nigel Farage got his bank account taken away. You're just blindly believing them out. If you not, <laughs> you've been burnt before, and the country's been burnt before. It's it's just so bizarre when I see people just blindly believing statements from Nigel Farage. You know, do, 
we've had out in the news with the BBC research that it was because he went under the threshold of the amount of money that he was supposed to have. And I, you know, I, I don't really know. I have no investigation in it. But one thing I do know is I don't believe a single thing that comes out of his mouth because he has a track record of lying, deceit, <laughs> deceit, promising the world and delivering nothing. <laughs> this doesn't happen in real life. This is what I find so bizarre. You know, you have that friend in real life, that annoying friend that goes, ah, oh, should we, do you fancy going, should we start playing pool regularly on a, on a Wednesday? Like, yeah, yeah, great. Okay, yeah, let's start playing pool on a Wednesday. Wednesday comes around, oh, sorry, mate, I can't do it. All right, next week. Next week comes around, oh, sorry, mate, I can't, I can't do it. You learn your lessons. You now know not to rely on that person and you know that you, you can't trust anything he says. In real life, when you get burnt, you get used to it and you don't trust people again. But for some reason, when it comes to Twitter, celebrity world, people just believe statements on face value. So bizarre. Uh, yeah, so I, I found this Farage thing very, very, very bizarre. Very bizarre indeed. Um, I just can't get my head around how people still blindly believe everything this man says. It's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. The other thing I love is the fact that he won't, he won't take just like, you know, he, he can go down that West or Barclays down the street and just open a normal current account. But it's because he wants his fancy rich man's bank account, isn't it? But anyway, enough of Farage. Let's move on for Raj. Uh, oh, yeah. Thames Water. Privatisation. Nationalising water. Put in the comment section down below what percentage of the country, if there was a proper really good vote that was done on public opinion on nationalising water, I'd love to know the result. My guess is sort of 70, 80% I think of people are in favour of nationalising water. Um, and this is what I just can't get my head around. Why the main two parties are not taking these, these opinions on board. I mean, it's been proven that uh, rail nationalisation has been a hugely popular, um, massively popular, even before Jeremy Corbyn started spouting about it. You know, it's just a hugely popular policy that even people on the left and the right agree on. So why does the main two parties don't want to adopt it? And this is more and more frustration with me, with the Labour Party. And it just baffles me because the only conclusion is is that you're getting pressure from private business that don't want it nationalised. That, that surely is the only reason that Labour would not adopt this policy, because they've got pressure from private companies. It must be, because it's, it's, it's popular. Bloody question time last week, they were all applauding it when they talked about nationalisation. It makes no sense to me. Let me have some water. Oh, Jesus Christ. One job, one job this bottle does is to hold the contents, <laughs> the liquid inside the bottle. And it's leaking all over the place. One fucking job. You have one job to do. Keep the liquid inside the container. It's still dripping on me now. But yeah, I, don't, I just don't get it. That's obviously the only reason that they've got pressure from private companies because it's, it's a, a massive vote winner and it just... Ugh. It so makes sense. Like, I've, I've often said on this channel, you know, I'm very into politics. I've got knowledge in, in certain areas, but economics is, is not one of my fortes. But when I try and think of economics, I try and just keep it as simple as possible. Now, take water as an example. Now, if it's nationalised, the, the money that we pay just deals with getting the water, fixing all the problems, and then investing in things that need sorting. As we know, the infrastructure is terrible, it needs renewing. And we don't have to worry about profit on top. So surely, surely it is gonna be much, much more cost effective and efficient than privatization. It, it, it frustrates me that it, it's just so, it's just so obvious that it's, it's, it's so badly needed. And, uh, <coughs> you know, in my view and many other people's views, just basic services that we need, transportation, water, 
housing to a certain extent. I mean, I'm quite happy for you to buy a house. If you want a big rich man's house, you know, great. Get a mortgage or just buy it outright if you're that rich. Um, but basic housing for people should not be for profit. The government should own a massive amount of housing, affordable housing that is rented out, not for profit, at, a, a, at an affordable price. The same with energy, the same with water, the same with education, with transport. All these things should not be for profit. Now, I, I don't mind you going ultra capitalist if you want a new iPhone or you want to buy a nice car or you want this, all the luxuries in life, yes. Free market capitalism, the crap out of it, go for it. But basic needs, water, services, transportation, housing, just just keep profit away from it. Just this, It's a service. And I'm, I'm sure that this is a, a <laughs> it's not a crazy opinion by ultra wacky leftists. It's not, it's it, it, the majority of people I think would agree with that. I've, I've got, this is getting a bit steamy in here, isn't it? It's all my hot talk, my hot takes. But they're not hot takes though, are they? They're not hot takes at all. What do you guys think? <clears throat> uh, but yeah, nationalise the crap out of it. And this this is what goes on to the, um, the NHS, doesn't it? NHS, 75 years of the NHS this week. Um, the right wing media, talk radio GB News calling it a cult it's a cult people are, are cultists to the NHS we're, we're, we're just proud that we still have <laughs> over all this privatisation that we've had in this country all the things that have been sold off for a pittance we're still hanging on to the fact that we still have a national health service that is paid for by taxes, by the government, and it's free at the point of use. We're celebrating that fact because everything fucking else has been taken away from us. The water, gas, electric, fucking trains, rail, everything has been taken away. And it's the one thing that we have left, and we're, we're, we're proud of it. And um, it's, 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 it's not going to be around for long if we continue with this Tory government. And even the Labour government, maybe one say, I'm, I'm getting. I've been for the last few months. I've been very, very <laughs> been moving further away from the Labour Party because they just you can't justify them anymore. They, they, what's the difference? They won't. They won't poke their finger in any type of nationalisation. They won't go near any sort of voting reform. <laughs> what? What is it? that makes them different to the Tories at the moment. Non-dumps. <laughs> That's the one thing they always point to, isn't it? That's the one thing. That's the one thing that makes them different from the Tories at the moment. Non-dumps. We're gonna get rid of non-dumps. Okay, great. Are you gonna do anything? What? Are you, what how are you gonna fix the NHS? Are you gonna take away privatization that's been ruining it? <laughs> nothing, absolutely nothing. It really, really frustrates me. It really does. I t I t I've tried so hard to try and justify Labour's actions over the over the, uh, the course of this channel, basically. Um, but I just find it ever so hard. Each time it just gets harder and harder to justify. We need some bold stuff here, Labour. We really do. And nationalisation of, of this perfect. It's in the palm of your hand. Come out and say you'd nationalise water. Everyone would love it. Even people on the right are sick of private private water. <laughs> Banging my head against the wall. But yeah, NHS is 75 years old. Good for the NHS, but my God, we've got to fight to try and keep it. We really have. It's just further, falling further and further into privatisation. Every little ounce, we're getting stuff like x-rays and things now being done by private companies you know it started with the food the cleaning uh, and now we've got private companies doing agency nurses and we haven't got enough nurses and the biggest collapse was the nursing bursaries when we used to pay british 
citizens to train to become a nurse. That, that seems like a, a distant memory now. What was it, like 2011, George, George Osborne got rid of nursing bursaries? It seems like a distant memory where it, 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 we used to pay people to train to become nurses. It's such an obviously good thing to do, isn't it? Because we, there's such a valuable commodity. It's such an amazing job for people to do as well. Not even the fact that we need them, but the, the benefit for people, there's over the last 10 years, the amount of young people that could have trained to become nurses, could have done a, an, an incredibly valuable job and, and really felt like they're, they're, they're giving, they're, they're doing good to the community that are now probably working dead end jobs that are giving them no job satisfaction, that are probably in the pit of mental health, you know, this is terrible. Oh, this traffic, Jesus Christ. I'm run out of things to talk about. Uh, <laughs> I just want to go home now. It's been a long day. I, I, I'm really tired. I'm really hot. I'm really tired. I'm really sweaty. I want to go home. I want to eat some food and I want to chill on the sofa because it's been a long day. Uh, I want to I sit in my garden for a bit. I want to check on my tomatoes. Uh, over the last couple of months, I've been doing some gardening. I might put out a video. I've done a few little bits, uh, a tour of my garden or some bullshit like that, if anyone's interested. Uh, but I've really enjoyed it. I've uh, I had my, uh, my traditional couple of months break from politics, from social media. Uh, I, I went to a music festival at Donington Download, which was great, and spent some time with friends and family. And um, I've done some gardening. I'm growing potatoes, tomatoes, green beans. I've got some carrots on the go. It's been lovely. Till next time, guys. Thank you, as always. Uh, thank you for sticking by the channel over the last couple of months. Thank you for staying subscribed. And I don't usually do this, but uh, I, I need to. I need to start doing it. Subscribe. If you've enjoyed my video, if you've come to the end and you haven't subscribed, subscribe and like the video. Till next time. Take care.